Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use the k-means clustering algorithm to analyze credit card transaction data. So this can be very useful for a variety of different financial institutions or consumer businesses, really anything where you're working with credit cards and payments, you can use these techniques to gain further insights. So let's dive into it. Now, first, you want to load in your packages, uh, Pandas, NumPy, sklearn, matplotlib, plotly, and of course, reading your data. And then next, you can easily see the number of columns and rows that your Pandas data frame has. The data is uh, 8,950 rows and 18 variables. And then you can take a look at the first five rows of each variable. So you have balance, balance frequency, purchases, all sorts of different things. And next, you want to see if any of the variables are missing values, because any missing or null values will throw off the k-means clustering algorithm. So you want to either impute or drop the missing rows. And just for simplicity, I drop the missing values and nulls. And yeah. And now I created the clusters using the balance purchases and credit limit variables. This gives you an overview of the different um, purchasing and spending habits of the credit card holders. And for initially, I'm building five clusters just to test out and see. And if you're curious, you can um, look at the values in the clustering data. So you can see balance purchases, credit limit. And a technique that's commonly used to determine your optimum number of clusters is called the elbow method. Now you can see here that you have the sum of square distances on your y-axis and the number of clusters on the x-axis. Now the goal here is to minimize your sum of square distances with the least amount of clusters. And the sum of square distances is a calculation um, involving Euclidean distance where um, it's the distance from each data point to the centroid of each cluster. So the more clusters you add, the more your sum of square distances is reduced. Now, the, the thing with the elbow method is the more clusters you add, it'll always reduce your sum of square distances. But after a certain point, it uh, does not keep reducing by any significant amount. So that's where you want to cut it off because the more clusters you build, the more computational resources you use and the slower your algorithm will take to run. So you can see here that after about four clusters, it doesn't really reduce much with each additional cluster added. So I decided to optimize the amount of clusters with four clusters and ran it again. Now, just for ease of interpretation, I converted the clusters to cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster four, and visualize that. Now down here we have the plotly code. Now you can see here it uses a for loop and it is actually going to build a 3D graph of all the clusters. Just give it a minute to run. And here you can see the 3D graph. Now plotly gives you different tools so I can select turntable rotation, come down here, and you can, you know, twirl around your little graph. <laughs> and see here you have balance, and then purchases and credit limit. And you can uh, hover over each of the data points in the clusters, and it gives you an idea of the characteristics of that cluster. So here the blue cluster looks like it's people with a low credit limit, and the red cluster is, you know, looks like they um, pretty much almost always hit their, or near their credit limit, but not quite all the way. And then the purple cluster 
seems to be people with a mostly high credit limit and with making a lot of purchases. So it's more sparse than the other clusters, as you can see. So yeah, that's just a quick and easy way that you can visualize credit card transaction data or any kind of numerical data you're working with. And it, it obviously there's more techniques and things you can do to farther dig into the clusters and you can try different um, variables to cluster on and look at the patterns with that. But this is a, a good start and I wish you luck in any of your clustering endeavors and feel free to message me if you have any questions or want to work together on a project or really anything and have a great day.